can you see what time is it? It's time for meta snapshot. We are kind of in the middle of the season and I plan to do the same as last season, which is mid-season update, which meets mid-season snapshot. I want to tell you what cards, uh, what decks are working, what are uh, bad, what are good, and basically what uh, decks can bring you can bring to pro rank. Uh, I want to show you different leaders for each factions. And I think with most of these decks, you can get to pro rank. I want to, I will tell you like which one are good, which are bad, why, and what you can change to make them even better. Mm, and probably which deck you can expect on the ladder as well. So you can be prepared uh, for encounter and you can win games. Let's start. Of course, if you like the video, please drop a subscribe and follow. It helps the channel a lot. But now let's go to the first faction. Okay, let's go with monsters. So monsters have actually quite a lot of archetypes at the moment. They are usually around tier two, three uh, decks. So they are not like super OP, but they can definitely win games. First one uh, that I actually like is Control Araka Swarm. This is uh, the deck that utilizes a lot of... Uh, of the leader ability. Uh, they spawn a lot of drones, a lot of organic cards are used in this uh, deck and they win with uh, big boys like Imlerit, Trees, of course Osrel as usual, usual and Glassy as a nice finisher because you create so many dr one point drones. You have cards like Adrenaline Rush that helps you with uh, keeps keep getting more points because of your uh, because of your drones spawn ability you have predatory dive that is just good uh, especially if you're going second you can just open with predatory dive and whatever your opponent is set up is just gonna die uh, and of course some organic cards some consume that create that can create even more one point uh, cards like rats and of course drones a little bit of throw punishment and uh, some thinning and some big boys as usual in a monster. This is pretty simple deck. The problem is that if you at the moment encounter like Araka Swarm, you usually know their plan. You know exactly what to expect. You know that there is like a Glasty coming. You know that you should kill drones. You know that they have limited uh, removal on of like parasite and uh, to natural selection and if you like survive this then you can basically win against this deck but it's uh, to play it's quite fun and it's of course of course can get you to pro rank second ladder, ladder, uh, ladder ability that i want to highlight is death's shadow this is actually super fun leader ability and it actually uses a lot of different archetypes. There are a lot of different types of Death Shadows uh, deck lists, and I kind of mixed two of the approaches to this uh, deck, so you can check b uh, on your own like both of them at the same time. Maybe it's an overkill, maybe you should focus on one, but I think this deck can uh, actually work and get you to pro rank. So there are two approaches in this deck. One is to create a lot of rats with Plague you Maiden uh, and Karantir. Basically, um, you can spawn two, uh, eat them, and then win with more food, for example. This is uh, super crazy. It creates so much tempo, so many points, uh, and it's super good. Also, it is worth mentioning that this also works if you swap uh, leader to overwhelming hunger then it's even better because uh, if you for example win one round one with your thrive which is very uh, often happening in monster decks you can then play one plague maiden with uh, karantir second uh, on its own then eat both with your leader ability overwhelming hunger and spawn some aoe Immediately you have like 60, 70 points or something like this and your opponent has a problem to keep up with it. You just pass and the, the, they just go two cards down into round three. This deck also utilizes the uh, additional uh, fun package of crones. So the plan is, the second plan is that you spawn all of the crones. 
one with uh, Karantir, of, of course, and another one with Renew. Then, and another one you can even get with Death's Shadows. Then you have so many crones that your crone ability stack and stack and stack, and you can even deal like 10 or boost by 10 your uh, allied units. So it creates some nice niche combo of big crones. From bronzes, well, it's what you will see in most of uh, monster deck, a package of Thrive and some eggs. It's very strong and can especially extremely powerful if you go uh, if you go second. What is worth mentioning that again this leader can be changed uh, to overwhelming hunger with some small adjustments and pretty much the plague maiden deck then works. But also you can even make a hound deck out of this. You can make a death wish uh, death wish heavy decks with all of the with scenario and some death wish and some dead love finisher this deck is also this can also bring you it will get you to pro rank it is also pretty good the third deck is the deck that i actually played uh, on the stream today and this is vampire deck so as i said before like i always try to highlight it vampires are sort of on the place that they are always fine you can almost always play them they like they are often not in meta but they can really shine in some for example tournament area but can also win you games in pro rank i actually had a decent win rate with this deck uh, today and it's working pretty good it yet again because it's monster decks and it's uh, a lot of thrive it is amazing if you are going second because then you can create so many uh, tempo with the mm, tribe that your opponent have to basically pass you have classic finisher of Ikern and Ozra, nothing new another finisher of Orianna with your leader ability that you can hide behind the cave troll and some dominance of protofledger and Ada that uh, that can also help you win some removal and some phoenix mechanics as well you can also put Mata here instead of Noglafar and you can switch some cards around. Maybe you can add Beast as well if you feel like it's a good card. I'm actually not sure about the Beast, but maybe it's good. You can experiment a li little bit. And well, this deck can definitely win you games. Second faction, NR. So, the thing about NR is that I, I can just make free uprising decks. They will be different and they will all be good. And they will all bring you to uh, pro rank. And that's pretty much it. I actually made two decks for other leaders, but they are not that good. And I'm not sure if they can give you to, uh, you can make them with two pro rank. Probably yes, with some time and some win rate and some luck, you can. But let's be honest, NR is now all around uprising, 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 uprising. I have chosen the Swarm up, uh, approach here because I think I like uh, Swarm version the most because it doesn't rely that heavily on the mm, big, um, big, big finisher of one card. Yeah, of course, Visegrad is amazing, but you can still win without it because you just create a lot of tokens that you can boost and get, win with your Lydian Skitement from the leader. So I think I like this uh, version the most, but also you can make the Draug version. Then you basically cut some, uh, cut like trees, bone talisman and uh, germine, and you add Draug and some, and for example, Philippa. And you have uh, your uh, Draug deck that can win by damaging your opponent. You can also uh, cut, the same cards and add Ana and some boost guys like left right left right and try them infantry and you have mid-range NR deck so the options of our uprising are wide and all of the decks can win you games and it's probably a tier one tier two leader ability so stockpile is my true love i love this since start of homecoming i absolutely love this uh, leader ability it got me to pro rank last season but 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 
last season the meta was much more greedy there were a lot of greedy decks uh, that didn't care about removal like hidden cash basically and also there was a lot of Nilfgaard double ball that this deck doesn't care about because you just uh, kill everything they kill all your like small cards with uh, uh, poison and then they cannot answer the big boost play now it changed a little bit i see a lot of monsters control i see a lot of syndicate control and everything is control so this deck struggles a lot but if you can match up with some greedy decks you can definitely win combo of uh, dandelion and visigota can win you any matchup if it's answer if it's unanswered or hidden behind don't win other than this pretty typical um, standard tier list I have made a video about it deck, so if you want to check, visit my YouTube channel, basically. And another deck that I also have created the video about, and well, I think now it's a little bit better than Stockpile, but it's still like tier 4, <laughs> tier 5, <laughs> tier 7 <laughs> uh, deck. This is like a shield NR deck that plays around all of the shields. You put as many shields as possible, as many shields as possible, as many shields as possible. Play a lot of dumb sorceress on immortals. This is pretty good uh, engine, sort of. It's pretty nice. And of course, you finish with King Ragnar and War Elephant. That's pretty much it. It can win you games, but it's not as impressive. And if you run into too many tall removal, you might have a problem. Third faction, Scoriatel. Well, Yep, you guessed, Mystic Echo is still good. It's been almost one year, right? I think Mystic Echo started to be super good in like June last year, and it's still good. It's still good, nothing changed. It's the same list basically. You can swap some bronzes around, you can maybe cut a little bit of uh, greedy cards like Percival, maybe cut a little bit of poison, but it's, well, it depends on your matchup, it depends on what you meet. But the classic plants is still there, Great Oak, Water of Broccoli, a lot of Carmony, and it's really the same deck since last year ago. It's the same. What can I say about it? Okay, another not really changed uh, deck, not really changed list. Uh, Elf, Dead Eye Ambush. You can go with uh, some tools, maybe some double elves because uh, I actually wanted to ch go with Veredaya deck because I just think it's more fun. Like maybe it's a little bit worse, like tiny bit, like 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.1 percent uh, worse than a double uh, elf deck, but it's more fun to play. So if you want to go for a scenario, for the elf scenario, you can go with uh, Dead Eye Ambush and uh, with Redaya. Then you can like make uh, slam Redaya uh, on Feign Death and I, next turn you can activate it uh, two of the like Prolog and Chapter in one turn and you can win with like Vernosiel, Great Oak and the same Grim. This is not uh, this is also not a new uh, deck list. This has been around for like few months already. Bronzes you can swap around. <coughs> you can go for duos. Whatever you prefer, this is pretty common and known version as well. Now at least for the third deck I have something juicy for you. This is a Spellatel deck that I've been playing quite a lot this season with uh, quite a success. It's super, super, super fun to play. I really like it. Uh, Machia Comfort just gives you a lot of provision and some more spells basically because Maha Comfort is another spell so it's pretty nice and it utilizes the victory with a big Harald Gord. You have a lot of things with uh, cards like Marching Order and Navigar Justice and you want to get rid of all your units in round one then uh, then ruin your opponent's dream in round three with all the immune cards like Sesenthesis and Gabor and finally win with big gourd which can usually be like mm, 15 points which is pretty nice for seven provision uh, pretty much if you want to make some adjustment to this deck you can cut aguara because it's a little bit random uh, yes it gives you another spell which is nice and gives you better gourd 
but it's a little bit risky if you uh, get a spell that is very synergistic with uh, other factions for example like uh, Sigridas, right you just basically get zero point play so you have to look out for it and but if you want some fun you can still have it and instead of aguara if you want to change it i think the correct uh, put might be it lean it's not that impressive but you can uh, put it lean uh, boost on some uh, immune targets and then you get basically more uninteractive points in round three this deck is super fun to play and can definitely win games i want to play it more and i will play it more uh, so if you want to give it a go sure you can get to pro rank with it for skellige 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 so skellige is not very interesting at the moment as well because well you've seen this a lot of la on ladder you know this deck this is probably like tier 2 maybe 3 deck but it's very annoying to play against it, it relies heavily on the draw of your opponent and you also know exactly what gonna happen and you can probably outpoint uh, this deck in wrong round 3 so if you are playing this deck you really want to go for short round 3 and if you are playing against this deck you really want to go for long round 3 uh, but this deck can easily it's like very predictable but uh, still can win you some games because of the heavy tempo of series i won't go much into the details because you know the drill you spawn your big boys like series wind carl you fin roach Nickers and some for example decoction and then you shuffle it back with flippy in round three and you get everything back your royal decree or mata into series and you play her again again pretty simple pretty straightforward double of the series double of nickers and morgvar and roach and that's it you know the deck there are some uh, deck lists with less alchemy some with more alchemy some with igni some with something else so then like the tech choices you can choose whatever you prefer but this is quite known deck. second is second wind so second wind you can make in two versions one is with uh, a lot of beasts and with uh, druids to activate your scenario and the second one is with dagur i actually prefer dagur because because it's more fun to play uh, so how you do it you play two great swords you play uh, dagger and you want to go for long, long round three which you will basically win with your greedness you play great swords you make sure they stick on the board and then you damage your opponent they're gonna have so many uh, bad minutes against you if they cannot answer your great swords or your dagger you finish with your wild boar of the sea or you can slam it twice with a uh, second win or you can slam twice for example morgvar which is also creates a lot of points you have some finning some ships that can f uh, that helps you of course some bleeding which is great with gray sword because usually like pink occurs once and bleeds go for two runs that's usually how this works in gwent so bleeding helps you to get more points cards like decoction turn changed from six points play to 12 points play with gray sword and it's like quite known deck as well and for the last deck from uh, skellige i give you my favorite blaze of glory i love this leader ability i really 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 like to play this deck and i think it's quite good i got from rank three to one with this deck this season uh with this one and with the Spellatel, but I know that, for example, uh, Ocean Mat got the to pro rank last season with Blaze of Glory, so this is quite nice. Uh, what's here? How it's working? So basically, you really want to draw your priest, and you can win with uh, your greedy plays with Armor Drakkar, with Raging Bear, and Tourism Veteran the round one. You can um, play some Alchemy cards. And then you want to go for a short round three, where you slam your uh, leader ability with Yuta. You get instantly 12 points uh, power, 20 points of value. Of course, if your opponent has a, such a big unit. And then you can summon it with Sigridas, right? Or use Hjalmar to 
damage something for 12 again. So in theory it can maximum get you uh, like 27 points using only leader ability and one card, but you usually don't have that many uh, big targets, that big target from your opponent, but you can still create many points. You have extra Draco Turtle here because I love this card and with Mardrom is so great because on Draco Turtle Mardrom changes into 12 points for 5, oh, which is quite nice. Uh, other than this, you can some typical stuff like Svalbard Totem and Chromother to help you with carryover and with some awkwardness for your opponent. This deck is super cool to play, it's decent. It can definitely win you games. Mm -hmm. So Nilfgaard is another deck that can uh, play for a lot of different decks, but actually all of you <laughs> Nil filthy Nilfgaard players play the same. Okay, that's not true, but you know, you know it. If you visit Reddit, you know it. Everyone has double ball, but you can also play one ball with Imperial Formation. I think this is one of the strongest decks at the moment. I think the TLG uh, meta snapshot gave it uh, almost like a five stars or something like this, and they put it in rank one and as a tier S deck as well, because, well, it's just very good. It can remove everything. It's like, it's gonna hate on your opponent. You have a, a Masquerade Ball to win round three, basically, and remove everything for, from your opponent board. And round one, we you win with the soldier package. Of course, you can like swap it around and win one with round one, blah, blah, blah. but the crossbow and fog package is quite good. Like people didn't discover it as fir first, but now it shows that it's pretty decent because if you play Raman uh, Ramon into crossbow moment, it is actually quite hard to remove this ping by one. So you have a nice engine that you can mm, utilize with only bronze characters. So basically then you can keep all your big goals for round three. This is pretty good. Because I know that you don't want to see another ball and another ball, I can make uh, basically three different leaders with uh, double ball. Basically you can play any Nilfgaard deck and just put a ball and typical cards and you will win. You can do it with Insposter, with Long Down, with uh, Imperial Formation, with Tactical Advantage. You can basically play double ball in every deck. Whatever you prefer, whatever you feel like it's needed at the moment in the current meta. So that's why I want to give you something else for other two decks. And first one is Enslave. So this is the very old school deck. Like half a year, year ago, or like almost one year ago, everyone was playing this it was like full of ladder of this deck and i wanted to revisit it uh, currently i wanted to check if this deck can still win games because like i noticed that the uh, poison is a little bit gone a little bit uh, less preserved on the ladder and there are not that many like tall removal cards that are currently played so i wanted to give it a go when I didn't really saw much of the Enslave Six, and when I like met Enslave Six, they usually run a lot of uh, car a lot of like reset cars, like Damien, like uh, Stefan, and King Let of King Slayer. So that was usually the approach that I met. I never met a Hyperfin in like six months, so I gave it a go, and it's pretty good. It got me to pro rank. Uh, on Saturday, I think, or on Sunday. So it's pretty much recent and it's pretty good. So what's the plan? The plan is that you want to use all your thing cards in round one. You want to get rid of as many cards as possible from your deck. You can even slam Hefty Helge and you really want to play slam Hefty Helge in round one to use uh, its power for all of these uh, tactics. And to be honest, only the Coction can answer it and are only another Nilfgaard player with Ternate Joust. That's pretty much how like, other people cannot really answer it. So you slam this, you slam your Finn, you want to Artorius on Imperial Brigade, you want to summon everything. Finn, 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 Finn. Then you go to round 3. You want Tibor in your deck as your only unit. 
and you go with Xartius, which can buff trees that can deal damage, Yennefer Divination that can boost another of your unit by power of Tibor, and then you will get for your own unit and get Tibor. If you are really in need of killing your opponent unit, because maybe it's like a super tall 20 points unit, then you can play first Cynthia, and then you play Vilgefortz, and your opponent will always get mm, three point golem, which basically means that Vilgefortz is like two, two power kill anything, sort of. Mm, if you want to more have more com consistency, you can switch Cynthia for Artbridge, but other than that, I think this this list is pretty uh, well built and can definitely win you games. Another deck that I wanted to give you to have something fun to play is Casino Double Cross, which which is weird. You should probably not craft it, and I'm not sure if it can give you, get you to pro rank. Well, if you are very lucky and you have a lot of time, then definitely yes. But it's super fun to play. It's super fun to play because of the craziness that happens. The, the plan is to win round one with, class, uh, with cards like Glynis and Imperial Diplomacy. And then you go to round three with Portal. You summon and immediately a lot of Assimilate. You play more of Assimilate, more of Assimilate, more of Assimilate, more of Assimilate. And then you spawn all of your crazy create cards and boost by shit tons. I made a, another video about it, this deck as well, so you can check it on my YouTube channel. And, and the last but not least faction, of course, Syndicate. So as you might know, I'm not the greatest Syndicate player out there, and I'm not the greatest Syndicate uh, deck builder. So, so, be, so be wary. And of course, but first, big question that arrives when you uh, launch your game after the patch is hidden cash dead and the answer is, is probably no it's still very good oh maybe by very good is that i um, like my benchmark is my meme deck so maybe <laughs> it's not the best benchmark but um it's still decent it's still all right leader ability that can win you games the nerf was huge and when i play a lot of this deck i actually see that uh, a lot of my cards give me like two or four uh, coins so i end up often with six which is exactly the barrier that you want to break you want to go to seven with most of your hard card like um, for example flying Redanian or like soul you want to get to seven and currently with all the changes you easily go to six which is sometimes tricky but this deck can still wins i won't tell you much about it because it plays exactly like mm, you played it in last season i cut madame uh, luisa and savola because i'm not sure if this is uh, correct approach now uh, maybe it's still decent because people won't have an answer to madame but instead i wanted to play like passive flora and Vinci for some greedy points and I think it's fine. Other another deck that is probably the most common, and I I'm actually not a big fan of it. Like it's super fun, yes, but it's so predictable that I think it's not that amazing. But a lot of people play it on the ladder, and it's still probably like a tier two, tier f maybe more like tier three deck that can win game if your uh, engines are unanswered. So. The plan of this deck is to play Portal in round 1 and boost by a lot of points with all your crimes. Then in round 3 you, uh, you spawn with your leader ability, um, Fire Swan, Zetalot, uh, Zetalots and you transform them with Horsome Senior into Juniors. And every crime card you play will deal another 4 points uh, randomly. So, basically your opponent needs to know what to do. If they can answer your catap luckies in uh, last round, then you will have so many less points. But if catap luckies are unanswered, even for at least one turn, it will create you so many points that you will probably win. This is very binary uh, for me. But 
and the same time you have still uh, quite huge gort which is um, like 10 12 points which is quite nice nice finisher so this deck can definitely win you games uh, there are a few deck lists there are some one two cards uh, swap here and there so you can look up for what you like the most i for example like damnation and i like excommunication but some people cut them so you can see whatever you like tavern brown is also a cut if you don't like it but i think it's also fine and the last but not least i think uh, so okay let's take it like this i think that currently the best uh, syndicate deck is old school mid-range syndicate so you just play uh, good cards and good leader and that's all like basically you can play wild cards or you can play blood money it changes nothing basically it depends on what play style you like I think that uh, a lot of people prefer blood money because it gives two more provision and two more provision is usually worth like three four points points more like it's hard to judge but some more points definitely and it's also a leader ability that can give you some more points and uh, like if you like the heavy removal if you feel like you need to remove something big you can play this one but I actually prefer wild card I like this uh, leader ability because it helps you get the perfect draw and also you can basically kill you have moral in your leader ability because with fist tech you can kill whatever you want you play poison on something and then wildcard the fist tech and uh, you can kill whatever and then you get some bonus coins other than this well, if you look closely, it looks like an old school, um, hidden, even hidden cash deck. Uh, it uses Passiflora, Philippa, Vivaldi's Bank, Madame Savola combo. Nothing new, nothing fancy. Flying Red Dunyan, that maybe you can cut, I'm not sure about it, but you actually generate a lot of coins. Um, Evald Adriano, Soul, it's everything the same, what you usually encounter. I like addition of beggars. Uh, in the deck because they can create you so many much more coins that you can utilize with Evald or like Street Urchin, Sea Jackal, etc. And that's pretty much it. This deck is like everything that we encountered for last year <coughs> against Syndicate, it's it's there. And then leader ability. So it's pretty standard. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. Remember that it's very subjective, uh, uh, like meta snapshot, let's call it. I just want to give you like few options to play with some very competitive decks. Some of them are pretty competitive, some are a little bit or a little bit more less competitive. But I, depending on how much time you have, you can bring all of them to pro rank. Uh, I want I have to highlight that a lot of well, at least half of the mm, deck list was were were based or were also um, checked with uh, other team meta snapshots. I always base uh, my um, ideas and my deck list on what I feel like it's currently the best, what I encountered on uh, ladder, but also I don't play that much to know everything. So I also check other meta snapshots and see what they think. Maybe I can uh, get some ideas from them like with vampire deck i uh, saw some of the cards they put and i made the maybe basically made a very similar deck list so a lot of credits have to go to other content creators as well but here i hope you enjoyed this little uh, meta snapshot maybe you will find some decks that you want to try if you enjoy them please drop a like and subscribe it will help me a lot and if you want to leave a comment with some questions i will be happy to answer them and of course 